Consumer Electronics Show isn't known for video games, and this year with Microsoft apps and Sony barely mentioning the PlayStation 3 or PlayStation Vita, there's a notable absence of the major players you might expect. But that doesn't mean video gaming's not at the show. In fact, this CES might be the most exciting for gaming that I can remember. And a lot of that has to do with the phone that's in your pocket. A lot of people are not quite satisfied with experience. You know, we see a lot of people buying third-party accessories, game pads to plug into their Android devices. And that says to us, you know, well, touch screen is a pretty good start. There's still a long ways to go. And for really, really precise controls in certain genres of games, you really want physical control. One class of devices wants to augment your existing phone or tablet with a controller. One of those companies is Moga by PowerA. And Moga is introducing the Moga Pro this year. The original Moga came out last year for $50, and they haven't announced the price for the Moga Pro, but it's a larger, fully analog controller. If you're used to something like the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 gamepads, this will feel very comfortable. I want the game developer to kind of control the experience, and so the gamer can just pick it up and play the way the developer wanted it to do. Then there's Green Throttle Gaming. They're perhaps best known for being co-founded by Charles Wang, who was the co-founder of Red Octane. That's the company that made Guitar Hero and was later sold to Activision. Green Throttle is making a controller called the Atlas, which again, if you're familiar with a you know, Xbox 360 or PlayStation controller, should be very familiar. The controller retails for $50, they're selling it direct, and they're working with developers to customize their games to work with their platform, which is called the Green Throttle Arena. We developed a plugin for Unity. Unity is an incredible platform for doing games on mobile, and um, a lot of mobile guys are, are seeing that as a way to kind of avoid the complexity of all the different platforms that are out there. They're trying to make a very familiar console-like environment. The controllers enumerate one through four. When you back out of a game, you're back into the arena, and they're really focusing on things like multiplayer, being able to play with two controllers or four controllers on one television screen or on your tablet. Well, both Moga and Green Throttle are asking you to bring your own device, whether it's a phone or a tablet. There are other players that are trying to do an all-in-one solution so that you don't have to worry about having your own device. What people are seeing right now is just the beginning stages of what you could do with a game on, on, a, on a mobile device. And it, in the coming years, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with a crossover from games on console to mobile devices. How do you help promote the mobile game developer to get into the space? The console space is really well addressed. You know, you have consoles like PlayStation, Xbox. Um, I don't think it really makes sense to, to do something uh, again in the, in the console space. Booyah, which at eight and a half million dollars remains the second most successful Kickstarter project of all time. The Ouya is a $99 Android console running the Tegra 3 chipset. And what they're trying to do is create an all-in-one solution that you hook up to your television, you use their controller, you don't need to bring your own device, and developers can support the Ouya directly. With its success on Kickstarter, they seem to have really kicked off the discussion about Android as a gaming console and as a gaming platform. And it really encouraged users to rethink the way they think about Android. At just $350,000 with 20 days left in their Kickstarter, the game stick isn't as successful as Ouya and probably never will be. But what they're doing is interesting. They're trying to make a $70 device that hooks up to the back of your television and allows you to play games very similar to Ouya, but it would also be portable. You'd be able to pop that stick out and bring it with you. It plugs right into the bottom of the Game Sticks controller. In fact, the Green Throttle controller will work with Game Sticks. So if you've got both, or if you bring your Game Stick to a friend's house and they have a Green Throttle controller, you can have multiple controllers so you can play multiplayer games together. But that's not all. There's plenty of other Android gaming devices at the show. There's the Arcos Gamepad, the Arcos Connect TV. There's the UNU, which was just prototype hardware. And while all these products might not be successful, there's no shortage of companies trying. One of the biggest surprises of this year's CES was NVIDIA's Project Shield. It's a Tegra 4 powered gaming device that they're selling and making themselves directly. NVIDIA doesn't normally make its own hardware. What's been really important in recent years is this, is this move to mobile, right? Um, everyone is talking about it. We're doing more and more of our computing in our pockets with our tablets. Um, and we have developed a lot of expertise in the processor technology space with Tegra. A Shield uses Tegra 4, which is our latest version of this uh, processor. It's got six times the rendering horsepower of Tegra 3. So we've developed a lot of competencies with portables, and we feel like that gives us, we have all the right components to build that and develop something compelling for the portable space. The Shield uses a 5-inch 720p touchscreen but it also has a full dual analog gamepad, which again, if you're familiar with an Xbox or PlayStation controller, you'll find very comfortable. 
What's notable about the shield is it's designed to really focus on the Tegra zone. That's NVIDIA's uh, library of Tegra-powered games. They're showing off games here like Hawken or Sonic Episode 2. Uh, and they're really focusing on making a console-like experience. In fact, you can hook up your shield to your television to have an even more console-like experience. Where the shield is different is in the overall quality. The device is very powerful. It's very well built. It has high-end specs. It remains to be seen if NVIDIA is going to be able to get the thing to consumers at a price that they find reasonable. NVIDIA is far more accustomed to designing chipsets and having other hardware manufacturers make things for them. So this represents something of a departure for the company. In this age where tablets and phones, it is a very, it's all about the user experience. You want very, very tight user experience. And we, we just, we've looked at the stuff out there and nothing really, I think, has captured the possibility of um, what can be done with this generation of streaming and portable technology. So we decided, you know, since no one is doing a great job, and since we have all the key components already, we might as well as put our expertise together and build something that's great that we can sell directly to the end user. If that NVIDIA strategy sounds familiar, it's because it's an awful lot like Valve's strategy for its Steam box. Of the long rumored Steam box, Valve's Gabe Newell told The Verge, we'll come out with our own and we'll sell it to consumers by ourselves. He mentioned it would be a Linux box, and that if consumers wanted to put Windows on it, they could. It wouldn't be difficult. Valve's focus on big picture mode is an effort to get gaming PCs into the living room. But that requires the cooperation of hardware manufacturers to make devices that are smaller, cooler, quieter, that have an aesthetic that fits inside your living room. Valve's here at the show meeting with other hardware partners to create these devices in addition to the one it's making itself. XI3 announced at CES an investment from Valve specifically to create the piston. Razer is also at the show showing off the Razer Edge. You might remember this from last year as Project Fiona. The Razer Edge is a 10-inch x86 Windows 8 powered tablet. It weighs about two pounds and comes with a handful of accessories. There's a, the Project Fiona-like motion controller which clips onto the back and provides two sort of PlayStation Move controllers on the sides. There's a keyboard dock. There's also what they're calling the console dock. The console dock allows you to hook up the edge to your television over HDMI and use it with an external controller, in effect creating a Steam box. A 999 for just the tablet, and a lot more than that with all the accessories. The Razer Edge is not the cheapest Steam box solution, making Valve's goal of building its own a lot more sensible. One other potential Steam box solution is, again, NVIDIA's Project Shield. The device is able to stream gameplay directly from an NVIDIA-powered gaming PC in your house to the Shield, and from there, you can outport it to a television. But all these devices point to is a new opportunity for hardware manufacturers to create new devices around open gaming platforms, platforms like you know, the Windows PC or Android. This is a complete reversal from the console model, which uses a closed hardware ecosystem to create a closed software ecosystem. If you look at the innovation that happens on a console, uh, where you've got seven, maybe eight years of iteration after the next console comes out, Mobile, it's happening at a rapid, rapid pace. In the beginning, every six months, we were coming out with graphics cards twice as powerful as the last generation. So the pace was just enormous. And developers had this very wide span of hardware they could target. Um, but you know, while that's, that, that's challenging from a development perspective, that's also very rewarding because you can develop games that's absolutely cutting edge. That's not possible on last generation stuff. And that can really set your game apart from what's out there already. These new open software ecosystems provide a lot of opportunity for developers and for gamers to find new experiences and to play games in different ways. And if none of these devices succeed, at the very least they represent something of an experiment, something of a new opportunity to think about our gaming consoles, where and why and how we play games. There is one X factor in all of this, and that's Apple. Apple maintains a tight control over what devices are allowed to hook up to its products. But until Apple decides to do something with the TV, there's an opportunity for companies like Ouya, for companies like Valve, for companies like NVIDIA to try and get a piece of the living room away from the big console manufacturers. You can think of these products as experiments. And even if none of them succeed, they at least give us a glimpse into what may be possible from the future of gaming.